they did not live upon the land, they lived as land. As the tree stands, they lived like that, just being a part of it. I think you are talking Ayurveda in a different language. They're actually the true scientists of sustainability. Oh. Welcome to Baby King was big, big king. People who stand up for humanity, unfortunately, end this way till now. There is no better inspiration than the Native American people. Environment was in their heart. It occupied the whole of it. It's really wonderful, I don't know what to say, really. I bow down to you for this wonderful thing that you've done. If there was no virus, I would have helped you. Tell us whatever you can speak about Ayurveda. I'm... Uh, I'm an ignorant person on oh. this <laughs> things. <laughs> so. Ayurveda is individual's medicine. Ayurveda treats every individual separately. So, Ayurveda says that to understand the individual and then treat accordingly based upon his prakriti, vikruti, environment, lifestyle, all these have great significant value. And I listened to your talk on YouTube, I think you are talking Ayurveda in a different language. <laughs> so if you say, I don't know Ayurveda, that is your greatness, but you are talking great principles of life, which is coming from ancient Vedic wisdom, Rugveda and Atharva Veda. I've read Living only in one. Harmony. I've read only one Veda, sir. That is this one. That's correct. I didn't read anything else. Other four I didn't read because I'm too mm. illiterate for those. That things. is Atma Veda. <laughs> 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 Atma Veda is the mother of all Veda. This whole inner inquiry, inner exploration, is very important. That is the place where Ayurveda is born. Mm. Hmm? It's time Ayurveda, Yoga, all these very precious sciences must reach the maximum number of people. Is uh, New Mexico made marijuana legal? Not yet? I have no idea. Is it? No. No, not yet. So I am saying uh, marijuana, alcohol became legal, marijuana became legal, cocaine will become legal. Mm -hmm. Time we make yoga and Ayurveda legal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I don't want to take too much Thank of your time. You, yeah. Thank you. Please tell us whatever you wish to about your traditions, your spirituality, your nation, what it was and what it is, and women in your communities. Uh, my greeting is to say, Sha'e'iya, Tachi Inishli, Aro Ashi'i Bashishchi, Maidish Geshni Dashin Nale, Tlafshi Dashiche, Kwatawastani Nishli. So you, you're, when you said, you know, uh, you spoke uh, of me in terms of women's empowerment. And I, and, and I want to say that uh, that's a relatively new term, isn't it? That's ancient, exactly what I was trying to say. For ancient cultures, uh, it, it, you know, we didn't even have to talk about empowerment. We didn't even have to think on those terms. <laughs> <laughs> the question was never about who will dominate whom. Right. If, if sustainability is the highest and most sought after technology <laughs> on the planet, who should we be talking to? Yeah. We should That's... be talking to those peoples who've known how to live in one place for a thousand years, five thousand years, ten thousand years, twenty thousand years. They're finding evidence now of of, of, of us forty thousand years. So 
you know, those people that have lived in place that way in relative health, harmony, and happiness, they're actually the true scientists of sustainability. So what do they have going on? What's going on over there with those people that they were able to do that? Let's hear the sounds of your universe. I'm going to sing uh, a grandmother calling song, a very feminine song. Ask grandmothers to come and bless you on your journey and your motorcycle too. Mm -hmm. My motorcycle, to honor a crazy horse, I put his name on my motorcycle <laughs> because I was so impressed by this man. Thank you very much. Uh, we are riding towards uh, Oklahoma and Fort Ferguson, or whatever the fort's name is, which is the end of Trail of Tears, but uh, we saw the weather reports and it says afternoon time the winds are going to be become very severe. Even now it's not easy, it's over 30 miles per hour. It is right now 10.04. By 11 a.m. winds could be gusting up to 65 and uh, at, that, at that level of wind from the sides, it's extremely difficult to keep the motorcycle on the road. So, here we are on Highway 40 East, on Interstate 40 East. <laughs> One road that we have traveled longest, maybe little, I don't know it exactly, but it should be around 1600 miles on this highway. But right now, busy battling the wind. <laughs> Wind chill is around two to three degrees and strong winds also, <laughs> maybe about uh, around 12 knots wind, riding cloudy day and <laughs> riding. There are hand warmers in the motorcycle but still all the fingertips getting frozen. Whoa. Here we are uh, at Fort Gibson. This is uh, uh, in the moment towards the west. This was like the last frontier. Between the Indian nations and the ever-expanding settlers. What is the use of a glove like this, huh? Where you can't use your fingers, how to ride like this? Look at this. This fort was built in 1824 as a serious push into the western frontier. In many ways, this was the terminus for the Trail of Tears, the Cherokees or the Cherokee Nation, which was removed as a part of the Indian Removal Act from the lush green hills of Tennessee to Oklahoma, this became the commanding post to oversee that uh, unfortunate or terrible uh, historical fact that the Cherokee walked all the way 
from Tennessee to here, losing thousands of people on the way and untold suffering. So, this post is uh, of great significance in the expansion of uh, the United States as a nation in those days and uh, this also became an important part of uh, mm, the Civil War. Uh, some significant events happened around this and well, I have two gloves but one eye is resting right now because the damn thing doesn't allow me to do anything sensibly uh, and I'm supposed to ride with this. Look at this. I'm supposed to ride with this in this cold weather. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Rural Oklahoma. Very basic, but agricultural families. Ah, look at the fall colors, huh? Bright and nice. I've never seen any Native Americans wearing a turban, isn't it? internet with the Cherokee language, like uh, Microsoft, Windows platforms, Gmail, Google search, everything you can do with Cherokee language. That's great. Entering uh, Arkansas, uh, and then entering Tennessee. Mm. How's it been? You've been on the bike for what, almost 40 days now? I don't know, I was thinking of riding to India, but then they told me there are no well, roads. Well, there's some oceans in between, so. maybe that, that might pose a problem. <laughs> <laughs> riding across <laughs> India and riding across the US, how is it? from a bike perspective? In India, it's more exciting in terms of what you see and uh, everything, but here we've hit all the really beautiful patches of uh, United States, not just riding on highways. We've been on country roads, we've been on very scenic roads, so it's been absolutely beautiful. But uh, we've been tight on schedule, too many meetings, too many talks, too many recordings. So, uh, it's not uh, really been a holiday as people think, it's been non-stop work. I don't know that anybody <laughs> thinks it's a holiday, but yeah. <laughs> I guess that's mm -hmm. the end of the catching up with Sadhguru on a bike for me, because we're going to be back in AAA. <laughs> yes, in the next twenty-four hours we'll be back. But we'll see you, we'll see you at Darshan and then I'll speak to you after that. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow's Darshan, okay? okay? Namaskaram. Okay then, bye. Namaskar. Oh. Be there for tomorrow's darshan, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's true. It was to be in Nashville, now we're pushing it to the ashram because of the weather tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Sadhguru, oh. we can follow you if you allow us. <laughs> <laughs>
shot and killed on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. We are here at the National Civil Rights Museum where Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. This has been the unfortunate reality of this world that people who stand up for what really matters, people who stand up for humanity, unfortunately end this way till now. Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement is the defining moment for American democracy. In many ways, democracy became a possibility only with civil rights movement. We're here on the Beale Street. Well, the blues legends have walked this street and played here. Above all, my favorite, my favorite, favorite blues star, B.B. King, and even Magic Slim have played here. It's great to be here. It's just that uh, not going into any of these places, because all of them are just bars. It's not about music. It's all about drink these days. But, uh, Real legends have played music out here and B.B. Uh, King's music in many ways defined how blues should be and also in many ways set foundation for rock and roll in America. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm from 60s, so B.B. King was big, big king, <laughs> still is. Not being on a two-wheeler or a motorcycle for this long, in many, many years, nearly thirty years plus, I was saying. In between, we have ridden a little bit here and there, one day, two days, three days, but not like this. Just a few hundred miles short of ten thousand miles. Well, First of all, our gratitude to all the Native American people who have cooperated and interacted with us, which is much of it is yet to come. But uh, I don't believe we can do justice to them for what they have been through, who they are, how long they've been here, nearly forty thousand years they've been here. We cannot do justice to that, but I thought at least uh, we must make them visible in the world because right now they are quite invisible. Because in the rest of the world, maybe in America there is some knowledge about it, but in the rest of the world, Native American people means a bunch of young men who ride saddle-less, you know, bare-backed horses, scream all the time and shoot at anybody who comes their way and do terrible things. So, uh, this is not what they are and they had well-established settlements. 
place like Kahokia over a thousand years ago, forty thousand people in one city. Just to give you a perspective, in the same period, in London there were only fifteen thousand people population. Here, a Native American village had forty thousand people. Forty thousand people cannot stay in one place without proper administration, without management, without a whole system of civilization. You cannot live together, forty thousand people. Well, you can't fix the past, but you can carve out a way for the future. That's all we can do, nobody can fix the past. What happened yesterday cannot be altered today, but what we do tomorrow, some possibilities could be created. Hope we'll be successful in that in some way. And above all, they're very, very relevant today because they lived as land. They did not live upon the land, they lived as land. As the tree stands, they lived like that, just being a part of it. I think uh, this is very, very relevant for this generation and the next. Environment is still… environmental concerns are still in the textbooks, in the PhD thesis, somewhere in United Nations or somewhere, somewhere like that. No, it has to come into people's hearts. For that there is no better information, there is no better inspiration than the Native American people. Environment was in their heart, it occupied the whole of it. I think this needs to happen to this generation, if at all, if something significant needs to happen for our own well-being and our children's well-being tomorrow. This is very important. But. Uh, I saw last two, three days, uh, our teams have been carrying little long face because they think it's too brief. <laughs> it got over too soon <laughs> Well, uh, you shouldn't stretch a good thing too much, you know? It's… when it's still good <laughs> Namaskar. It's really wonderful, I don't know what to say, really. It's been fantastic being with all of you. It's most wonderful to… in anywhere in the world, I would say, the greatest thing to accomplish anything is the smallest details are taken care of by somebody. Otherwise, the big things won't happen. So, thank you for every one of you for fixing thank the vehicles, you. keeping it going. Uh, I know you're fixing the water, the toilet and this and that and everything. I bow down to you for this wonderful thing that you've done. If there was no virus, I would have helped you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for having us.